Police and Columbus Fire Pipes and Drums. Let's give them another welcome or another thank you. Can we please stand as the Columbus Fire Honor Guard posts the colors and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? Please, I, pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please welcome Dr. Dexter C. Wise for the invocation. To Dr. Ned Pettis, to Chief, Fire Chief, and to all the dignitaries here, Sister Lynette, and all of you. When this building was built, it was initially designed by an architect, and the architect gave to this building functionality and visibility. Behind the architect came a contractor. The contractor gave structure and stability. But today we are naming a building. And when we name a building, we put personality in it. It's just like when God made Adam and Eve. First he formed them, but it was not until he blew into them the breath of life that they became a living soul. And what we're doing today is adding to these bricks and to these mortar personality personality, not a person but a spirit. And the name that is going to be affixed to this building is the name of a person of integrity, a person of scholarship, a person of leadership, a person of fighting, a person who is a fighter, not just of fighting fires, but fighting systemic barriers throughout the years. And so we affix not only his name, but his spirit to this place, that everyone who comes in will not only receive training, but receive that spirit and go forward in that way. God, we thank you today for this building. We thank you for this man whose name will now be affixed to the building. We pray that the spirit of Dr. Pettis might be going forward in the persons who come in and through it, and that they might not simply see themselves as firefighters, but that they might see themselves as persons who communicate with the community, who put out fires that are not only fires that burn materials, but fire between people and build a better community. We love you and we praise you. In your name we pray, amen. You may please be seated.
Well, good afternoon and welcome, everybody. Today is a special day as we honor Dr. Ned Pettis, Jr. I've had the honor and privilege to work for Dr. Pettis as my chief, as my safety director. His leadership, mentorship, and trust are the sole reasons I am here where I am today as a fire chief of this great division. Dr. Pettis served 10 years of our, as our fire chief. He truly moved the division to the 21st century and built a solid foundation which continues to support the division and the fire service across the globe. Today, we have honored guests and colleagues of Dr. Pettis present from across the country and the world. U.S. Fire Administration, Dr. Lori Moore Morrell, from the United Kingdom, Chief Peter Holland, and retired Chief Russ Sanders, who led the IFC and the NFPA, and the retired Chief Luther Fincher. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm sorry, we also have CEO and President of the NFPA, Jim Pauley. I'd also like to recognize and thank several other dignitaries for attending today's event to honor Dr. Pettis and his family. Mayor Ginther, Director Bishotti, Mayor Coleman, Commissioner Boyce, Councilmember Emmanuel Remy, retired Police Chief James Jackson, Chief Lane Bryant, all my colleagues that served with me, Thank you for being here. At this time, I'd like to call Andrew Ginther, our mayor, up to the podium. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. What a great day here in the city of Columbus, Chief Hap. Thank you to you and to the entire Division of Fire, to Dr. Pettis and his family. We say thank you. We say thank you for sharing him with us because we know folks who serve on the front lines, their entire families serve alongside them. And so let today be a moment for us to pause as a community to not just celebrate and recognize him and his service, but this family for what they've given and sacrificed to this community. We're grateful for each and every one of you. Director Bashadi. Former Mayor Coleman, Commissioner Boyce, Chief Bryant, Chief Jackson, thank you for being here. I know that means a lot to Dr. Pettis. You were a credible mentor for him throughout the years and it means a great deal for you to be here today. Appreciate you, Chief. When I became mayor in 2016, I knew one of the biggest decisions I would make would be choosing a director of public safety. So much of the city's well-being rests there. I wanted someone who was as committed to neighborhoods as I am. I needed someone the community trusted, someone who could build bridges between all people and all communities. I found that person in Ned Pettis. He spent 35 years with Columbus Division of Fire, starting back in 1977, when I was two. <laughs> he rose through the ranks to become the city's first African-American fire chief in 2002. Under his direction, the division received international accreditation through the Center for Public Safety Excellence. Columbus was also recognized as the first fire department in Ohio to implement new web-based statewide emergency response plan, which served as a model for the entire country. And during his five years as our safety director, Director Pettis oversaw significant changes in public safety. The addition of body-worn cameras for Columbus police officers, installation of the shot spotter gunfire detection system in Columbus neighborhoods, the replacement of fire stations 2 and 16, and the opening of fire station 35 and police substation 1. But I know one of the biggest parts of Director Pettis's legacy he first spoke to me about when I was a rookie council member and he was fire chief, and that was the cadet program. How could we ensure that kids growing up in Columbus neighborhoods and neighborhoods from Central Ohio could get in a pipeline so that they could serve the people of Columbus in neighborhoods throughout our great city? He pitched this idea to me, and ultimately, we made that program a reality. And I'm here to tell you it has been a huge 
huge success. Not only do we have more firefighters on the street now than we've ever had in our city's history because of Director Pettis, but passing on that passion for the cadet program, Chief Hap took the torch and took our efforts to the next level because of what Director Pettis instilled in him so many years ago. The next division of fire class will be the most diverse fire class in the history of the division of fire. Thank you, Ned Pettis. <laughs> and a smaller pedidly thing, but thing that just kind of stuck in my crawl a little bit. So the women's locker room here at this academy, not much of it, glorified closet. Well, I'd been all over Chief Half and the team here because before we would come to this day and put this man's name, legacy, and reputation on this wall, we needed to make sure that women felt as welcome and valued and appreciated in this building as the men. So Director Prashadi took me down to check it out. We knocked on the door first. <laughs> and it's better than men's locker room. I know it's a small thing, but it's not so small if you're a woman that wants to join and lead this community as a firefighter or paramedic. And so I'm grateful to Director Pettis, his family, and he remains an incredible ally to me. Leadership has been lonely in the last couple of years, probably never more lonely. And I've been able to count on Director Pettis for wise counsel, advice, encouragement, and prayer over me and my family. And so it gives me great pride and a way for us as a city to honor today, Director Pettis, that we are naming our Columbus Fire Training Academy, the Dr. Ned Pettis Jr. Fire Training Academy. To Dr. Pettis and his family, we say thank you. On behalf of a grateful city, we hope that all the men and women that pass through these doors in the future will know what incredible legacy and contribution this man and his family have given to this city. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor Ginther. At this time, I'd like to call up here Safety Director Kate Bishotti. Mayor Ginther, Mayor Coleman, Chief Hap, Director Pettis. This is a very special day for me, both professionally and personally. Professionally, I had the good fortune to work closely with Director Pettis as a member of his executive staff in public safety and later in the mayor's office. I got to see firsthand the quiet but strong leadership that was the hallmark of his four decades of service to our city. He continually pushed public safety forward, forging new grounds in the areas of technology, transparency, accountability, and diversity, leading the way to build new connections and stronger bonds between our first responders and the people we serve. Through good times and bad, the people of Columbus were better off because of the firm stewardship of Ned Pettis. Director Pettis values people, and it shows in how he treats them. That's why this day is also personal, personal to me. I not only had the opportunity to see his leadership up close, but also his kindness, warmth, and generosity. To have learned at his side, to follow in his footsteps, and now to be here today honoring his exceptional career of service is truly my honor. Congratulations, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Director Pettis.
our previous mayor, Mayor Coleman. First, let me say what an honor it is for me to be here this hot Tuesday afternoon where I could barely see any of you because I don't have on my sunglasses. Uh, it's an honor because we're here to celebrate an icon in our city. But before I say further words about this great man, I want to acknowledge Chief Jackson because I will tell you that Chief Jackson was the pioneer in this city. Uh, he was the first black chief in the city's history. And if there wasn't a Chief Jackson, there wasn't a Ned Pettis. And then there wouldn't have been a Mike Coleman. There wouldn't have been a Kevin Boyce. There wouldn't have been a Mitch Brown. So Chief, I thank you for being the pioneer that you are and God bless you. I'm glad you're here. And here's another reason why I'm so honored to be here is because you men and women who are our, who are our firefighters represent the best damn division of fire in this nation. And I'm proud of each of you. But a person who helped contribute to the greatness of this division is the same person that we're honoring here this afternoon, Ned Pettis. He's not only just a doctor, an academic, the most educated fire chief in America, a PhD as well, a doctor. Uh, he served as chief for 10 years, safety director for five, and a community leader as well. But through it all, he was an innovator and a lifesaver, and he helped make this division the way it is today. And to show our gratefulness is, uh, we're just so glad to do it, Chief, and I'm glad that, and I always call you Chief. I don't know what to call you Chief or Director or Doctor, but whatever it is, you're the same Ned Pettis I've known for a long time. And so when Mitch Brown and I, Mitch was my safety director, we're looking for a new chief. I think it was back in 2001, if I'm not mistaken. And let me tell you, with Mitch's help uh, and direction, thank you, uh, it was the easiest decision I ever had to make as mayor, to select Ned Pettis as the next chief of the Division of Fire. He's done an honorable and incredible thing with this division. And the best thing about the chief and his leadership skills is that he always made the men and women, the firefighters of our division ready so that they don't have to get ready. <laughs> That's a big deal. They're ready so they don't have to get ready. He made sure that happened every time and all the time. So Chief, thank you very much. Um, again, to your family, uh, we're grateful for your leadership in this community and may God bless you. Thank you. At this time, Council Member Remy. few editions of the program. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Chief Hap, Mayor, Director Pashadi. I'm Councilmember Emmanuel Remy, and, and I'm very humbled to chair the Public Safety Committee for Columbus City Council. So happy to be here today with all of you to experience this long-awaited and well-earned moment to celebrate the dedication of the Dr. Ned Pettis, Jr. Fire Training Academy. I had to say a few words to a lifelong Columbus resident who made his life 
about serving the residents of the city of Columbus. I may not have known you as many years as a lot of the other people, but we've been through some things. 2020 and, and beyond was something to be reckoned with. And it was a transformational pivoting of public safety, not only in the city of Columbus, but this nation. I want to thank you, Dr. Pettis, for your dedication to serving the residents of Columbus. Your extraordinary four-decade career as former public safety director and fire chief has proven your dedication to service and working towards improving our public safety systems. I know it wasn't an easy task, but you have gone above and beyond to engage our communities in ways that have left lifelong impressions. Your commitment to continue reaching new heights and unwavering passion for serving Columbus over the years has changed the direct direction of this public safety uh, department within the city of Columbus, knocking down systematic barriers that have allowed families to live, work, and thrive in a safe place. Thank you for both of our chiefs here today. Thank you for REACT, SPARK, and all the programs that you helped to enact in your leadership, helping us to transform our, our emergency response to the right response for every single call that comes into the city of Columbus. It's officers, firefighters, doctors, nurses, EMTs, 911 call takers, and others just like you who restore hope in our community. And for this, I salute you. Congratulations. At this time, Franklin County Commissioner Dale Boise, please come to the podium. So you called me Dale Boyce, <laughs> which is my uncle, uh, who was a firefighter for many, many years. And so uh, I'm not quite up to his stature. I, he's going to love the story, by the way. So um, it is an absolute honor to be a part of such a, uh, a perfect honoring of, of someone who's had an incredible impact on uh, the legacy of what it means to be a resident of this great community. Um, let me just share with you, Mayor Ginther uh, shared his age when you first started in the academy <laughs> at, um, at, in January 24th of 1977. I was six years old. And it was around that time I was a first grader at uh, Fairwood Middle School, or Fairwood Elementary School, I believe. And in the middle of the night I woke up, and it's probably two in the morning, and the room was full of smoke. And I don't know if you've ever experienced being in a fire. These guys have. <laughs> but those of us, uh, us uh, civilians, <laughs> twice, I have two, uh, Mayor. <laughs> but to wake up in the middle of the night with a room full of smoke as a child and to be disoriented um, and to try to figure out what was happening is a very scary moment. But there is no moment like seeing that firefighter in front of you in that moment. And so, Mayor, you mentioned uh, the impact he was having uh, on lives in Central Ohio. Uh, I truly believe, I'm not saying you were there that day, but maybe you were, um, but I truly believe uh, that firefighters are, uh, we don't do enough to recognize the sacrifice, the commitment, and the lives that you make, that you save every day and the impact that you have every day. And I looked up the word legacy before I got here. And Webster's defined legacy as something that is passed on in your faith, in your ethics, in your core values. A legacy that's represented by a name on a building, but moreover, represented by a new community. In 1977, I can assure you that the Columbus you live in today was not the Columbus we lived in then. And what I mean by that is it takes a lot of people to make us what we are today. And it's people like Ned Pettis that have contributed greatly to what that legacy is, can be, and will be with those folks standing out in the crowd right now. And so it is my honor to stand here as part of a delegation of people honoring 
Ned Pettis, Mayor uh, Ginther, you asked me when you became mayor to serve as chair of your transition committee for the public safety selection director. And we got probably hundreds and hundreds of resumes in. And I can assure you that the minute your name came up, and it was uh, myself and Dr. Booth, uh, both co-chair of this, I can assure you that the minute your name showed up on the resume pile, we knew where we were going. We went through a process for the media watching. <laughs> we did do the process. Uh, but even doing that, um, we knew that we had the right man for the right time and for the right purpose. And so this dedication today uh, signifies not only your legacy, but the legend that you are, the leader that you are, the impact that you've had over a lifetime right here in Central Ohio, and the lives that you've saved. God bless you, congratulations, and thank you for your service. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Got it, got it, got it right. <laughs> and I was good friends with Dale. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce um, our U United Fire Administrator, Dr. Moore Morale, to come up and say a few words. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. What an honor to be here as the United States Fire Administrator. It's such an important day uh, for the city of Columbus, the Columbus uh, Fire Department, and also Dr. Ned Pettis, who is my longtime friend. And so I just wanted to share a couple of stories because it was just fortuitous that we're here today, but our life has been like that, right? I met Chief Pettis, and I call him that as well, uh, Chief Pettis many years ago when I was working with the International Association of Firefighters on the labor side, and he was one of the chiefs that got it. In other words, he knew that labor management cooperation was imperative to a successful fire service. He knew that there was no one more interested in success of the fire department than labor, the people on the front line. And so we became friends long ago. And then as he started to think about doing a doctorate, he called me and he says, I'm thinking about this, what do you think? And I said, well, of course you have to do it. I'm sorry about that, I know it took a lot of time. But <laughs> I said, you have to do it. And, and he pursued it and we talked many times during that pursuit of his academic career. And then most recently, after being appointed to this position, uh, Dr. Chief Ned Pettis called and he says, you know, I'm working with a group of students. Would you mind talking with my students? which says to me that he always thinks of the future. He always thinks of the success of who's next. And he always thinks about that secession planning. So there is no greater honor than this uh, to be able to say who's next to go through this academy um, as a world-class academy. And so, Chief Pettis, you are a timeless leader. And more importantly, you're a good human. And we can only all aspire to having someone say that about us. So on behalf of President Biden and the Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas and our FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell and all of the men and women of the U.S. Fire Administration, congratulations, sir. Thank you, Dr. Morrill. At this time, it's my honor to introduce the, the man of the hour, a great friend of mine, a great friend to everybody here today, Dr. Ned Pettis, Jr., my chief, my safety director. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, and all our dignitaries, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for being here. I would said to myself I was not going to get emotional, and I'm going to pinch myself right now <laughs> to make sure that doesn't happen so that I can talk to you. But before I get started, since the mayor and the county commissioner has already thrown out 
ages and, and how old they were, two years old and six years old in 1977, I'll tell you, I was 25 years old. And the leader that I admired back then as a brand new firefighter recruit, uh, the leader that I wanted to be like was retired police chief James G. Jackson. And he had just been promoted to deputy chief. And over the course of the next 14 years, uh, I admired him. I learned all about him. And he became the, the chief, I believe, in 1990. And the next year, I got to meet him. And uh, one of his sergeants, Charlie Martin, when I got to come over to his office and meet him, he saw me straightening up my tie. He said, you want a breath mint? <laughs> But I got to go in his office and meet him, and I, I admired him from then on. So I, I wanted to acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge uh, Sir Peter Holland from the United Kingdom. He is the chief inspector for the Crown Premises Fire Safety Inspectorate in the United Kingdom. I'd like to acknowledge Jim Pauley, the CEO of the National Fire Protection Association, with offices in 80 countries throughout the world, is here today. And my two mentors after I made fire chief in the International Fire Service, Russ Sanders, who was the executive secretary of the Metropolitan Fire Chiefs Association, as well as a regional director for the NFPA, and Luther Fincher, who was also uh, Metro Chief Executive and our liaison to the International Association of Fire Chiefs. And so best practices and how things are done in the fire service around the world, I learned that from those guys. Thank you so much for being here. To Mayor Ginther, thank you so much for this honor, which I could never have imagined would be in my future. You also have been a blessing from God to me and my family over the years. Again, thank you so much for this honor. And to my wife, Lynette, the love of my life, thank you so much for your love and support through it all. You were my inspiration and strength, and you were the voice of love, truth, and hope that kept pushing me on to victory. Everyone, I want you to know that Lynette stuck with me through all of my studying to move up the chain of command. And along the way, she learned way more than she ever wanted to know about fire department standard operating procedures. <laughs> to everyone here today and to those who may view this event online, words can't adequately describe how proud I am to have the best fire training academy in the state of Ohio named in my honor but I would like to briefly try to share with you what it means to me on a personal basis, even though I know that words can't possibly adequately describe it. I'm going to try. It is an achievement of a lifetime. This fire training academy trains individuals to be the ones to respond to help people when they are possibly facing the worst time of their lives. It trains responders to do all that can possibly be done to be a lifeline between the incident scene and hospital emergency departments. This fire training academy takes regular citizens and turns them into first responders, our nation's first line of defense in the event of a disaster, whether natural, man-made, complex emergencies, pandemic emergencies, or what fire departments across the nation refer to as all hazards response. The vision for the National Preparedness Guidelines is a nation prepared with coordinated capabilities to prevent, protect against, respond to, and recover from all hazards in a way that balances risk with resources and need. Not only do individuals receive the best training available according to those standards here at this training academy, they also qualify for college credit for successfully completing the training. This training academy is accredited 
certified and authorized to provide certification training for firefighter one and two, fire inspector, EMT basic, paramedic, hazmat technician, rescue technician, bomb squad technician, certified instructor or educator, and on and on. Clearly, I am extremely proud to have my name attached to such an accomplished institution. And though words can't adequately describe what this honor means to me, I can say it gives me a sense of peace, gratitude, thankfulness, and humility because of how far God has blessed me and my family to progress. As children, my parents were forced to leave school at a very early age to pick cotton as sharecroppers and continuing until they were around 30 years old. Words can't describe how proud I know they would be if they were still here. Words can't describe how proud it makes me to know that I made history in my family and in my community. Words can't describe how it makes me feel to know that they are all so very proud of me. But words can describe what it means to have a good name. Receiving this honor gives me a really good name. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 states, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Receiving this honor gives me that good name, a better name than I ever had before. So Mayor Ginther, thank you so much for how you have supported me along my journey. And I would be remiss if I did not thank former Mayor Michael B. Coleman for appointing me fire chief in the first place without which I would not be here before you today. So yes, thank you, Mayor Coleman and Columbus City Council, for which Mayor Ginther served as council president as well as Mayor Coleman. Thank you so much for trusting me with the funding and authorization to expand this training academy into a state-of-the-art institution. And so to you all, I say, May God bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that you could think or imagine. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Thank you. Okay, uh, can I have Dr. Wise come back to the podium for the benediction? Can we stand, please? I think I'm going to get Dr. Pettis to preach on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this occasion. We thank you even more. For those who went into the decision to name this building after Dr. Pettis, and we thank you for the name that he gave to us. We don't name this building to give him a name. We name this building because of his name. Now, God, we pray that the blessings, we pray that the blessings might be upon all the firefighters, the first responders, the persons who go forth from this place to serve and to save lives, save theirs as well, in your name we pray, amen. This concludes the ceremony. Uh, we'd like you to, if you would, walk in. We have cake inside the uh, chapel here. But we also got all Dr. Pettis' uh, memorabilia inside there. And also back to my uh, far left, 
is um, the actual uh, plaque that's up mounted into the wall. Please stop by and see it. Thank you for all joining us today. Great job.